There is one remarkable thing about worldly people, and that is that worldly people invest in many things that simply don't exist. And the non-existent things worldly people invest in are things that can easily be disproven that they have no basis in reality. But with world links, it's all about relief. As long as they get relief from something, as far as they are concerned, it's real. If they can't get relief, it's bullshit. It's nonsense. That's how worldly people think. It's the, the relief they get that determines whether something is real or something is valuable. For example, this idea of free will. Also associated with free will is our free choice and free thoughts. Now, let me tell you, there is no such thing as a free choice. Any choice or decision you make will have effects and those effects will have consequences. For example, you see a pond of with water, a pond with water and you want to jump in it to swim. Okay, you can do that. When you jump in it, there's an effect in the water because you've jumped in it. And others who are in the water will feel the effect. And when you're in the water, you're wet. You can't jump in the water and not become wet. That's not possible. The choice to jump in the water implies an effect gets, that goes along with it. For ex another example, you can decide that you don't want to eat. Okay, mentally, you can do that and physically you can force your body to comply with what you want, but your body will get sick and you'll likely die. So, just because you want something doesn't mean that it's a healthy, nor a good thing, nor a practical thing to do. So, free choices don't exist. That's one thing. Free thoughts don't exist either. While we are spirit beings, we are energetic creatures, so we affect others with our thoughts. If you enter a room, and there's someone in there that can't stand you. Why? Because they have their pain that they, that they are projecting onto you. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel uncomfortable. And because you feel uncomfortable physically, you're likely not to function well over there and you want to leave. Their thoughts affect you. And that's not all. The negativity they're emitting from their thoughts towards you is also affecting other people. So other people also feel uncomfortable, not knowing what's going on. So. The thoughts of that individual, even though it happens inside of them, it's not free because it affects others. So if someone has positive thoughts, it will benefit others. If someone has negative thoughts, it will harm others. That's how it is. So the whole idea that as long as it doesn't affect others, nobody has anything to say to you, listen, after you do, think or don't do or don't think will affect others. There is no such thing as isolation in the spirit world. Isolation is a physical thing. If you have a garden, you can isolate by putting a hedge around it physically. But even then, the isolation is only a barrier between what's in the garden and what's outside of it. But it's still part of the landscape. So even in the physical, isolation is just a perspective you can have on things. Isolation in the spirit world does not exist. So there is no such thing as privacy. The whole idea of privacy implies that there is this magical sphere that's yours, where you play God, it's your universe, and nobody is allowed to come there without your permission. It does not exist. You can be in your house, in your living room, and you feel under attack. You have you become physically ill. You, need, you feel like you need to go to a doctor. Why? Because somewhere in New Zealand, Maybe thousands of kilometers away, the people met negatively upon you. Or you can be in your car and suddenly you feel uncomfortable around the house. What's going on in that house? There's a lot of domestic violence going on. Now, the people of that house may say what happens within a house is none of your business. But here's the thing. What happens in that house affected you Why you passed by in your car. You, you never knew that the house even existed. You're in this neighborhood for the first time. But whatever happens in that house emits to the outside and your inner radar picks it up. So this whole idea of privacy, it's 
nonsensical, it's foolish, and it's flat out delusional. There is no such thing as privacy. There is no such thing as a private life. There is no such thing as personal space. It does not exist. But why is it that worldlings keep investing in those concepts that have no basis in reality whatsoever? Why? Because it gives them relief. It gives them the illusion that they can do it without God. It gives them the illusion that they are God and that they have to say and that they are in charge. That's what it's all about. Worldlings want to be in charge no matter what. Even when they're caught, they want to be in charge. So they are psychic addicts that thrive on the thoughts of being in charge. That's why they invest in thoughts that grant them the, the illusion that they are in charge. That's why when you, they invest in ideas as privacy, private lives, boundaries. A boundary simply means that you bind someone to do what you want. So it's a form of casting a spell on someone. You have a will and you don't want the other individual to have any option then to do what you want. And now you, f you blackmail them with pain or discomfort to do whatever you want without any regard for them because it's just what you want. It's your boundary. You have boundaries, you have limitations. And because you have limitations, they have to get along with your limitations. That's what enforcing boundaries is all about. It has nothing to do with protecting yourself from harm or exploitation. It has to do with you playing God. Worldlings want to be in charge no matter what. And that's why worldlings want to get along. That's why there's so much strife, rivalry, and violence in the world. Because you have a bunch of creeps that all want to control one another. They all want to be in charge at each other's expense. So what ends up, ends up happening is, is that vile predators take charge over them all. And now they still seek to violate one another to be in charge. That's the world. That's what the world is. There is no such thing as a free choice. There are no free thoughts. And free will, which implies that you are a sovereign God that's allowed to do whatever he or she wants because it's your universe, it doesn't exist. You're not a God and you don't have your own universe. Get over it. But here's the thing, reprobates will not get over this. They'll feel victimized by the fact that they can't be in charge of God himself. They feel threatened by the fact that they are not in charge of other people. So they will play the victim because they can't be in charge, as if reality is assaulting them. Why they will use this role of the victim to dump their frustration on others? That is the only type of leverage they can get. Leverage through violence. And they will protect this violence of theirs no matter what. It's only through violence that they can temporarily have an advantage over someone else. And if you mess around with that illegitimate leverage, they'll kill you. So, the whole idea of free will is something that demons came up with just to pacify reprobates. So that reprobates would feel at ease serving them. That, that's what it is. Free choice, free thoughts don't exist. All your thoughts affect other people. Of course, there's a degree to how much it affects the environment, but all your thoughts affect the environment. So also thoughts of other people also affect you. So unlearn this BS of free will, private lives, boundaries, and all of that. They are not real. The only thing that's real is God's will, the will of the Heavenly Father, and then you have angelic and human beings that get along with God's will, and because of that, they are in absolute harmony and joy with one another. And then you have the reprobates, those are angelic and human beings that diverge away from God's will, and because of that, they are not in God's provision and they end up vampirizing one another, ruining one another. And now they want this ruin to be afflicted on everyone else so they don't have to face themselves. That's what exists. Which camp do you belong to? That's it for now. Be at peace.